Over 30% of youths in Uganda are living with HIV. Some of these were born with it, others contracted it along the way. However, these youths deal with this situation in very many various different ways. Some go through depression and in the end they turn up using substances, drugs and all that. While others choose to deal with it in a better way, like uh, joining activities that will encourage them to live on, like sports, music and all that. And uh, on today's episode, we are going to host Gloria, who is going to share us with with us her story and uh, all her journey and how she has survived and lived on. I'm your host Zawede Patricia. Welcome to this episode. Uh, so Gloria, how are you? Fine. How are you Patricia? Um, I don't know if you mind removing off your mask like for our viewers. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> ah, okay. Kale. Thank you. So Gloria, I'm so happy that you are here to share your story with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. To Pleasure is Saudi. mine. Mm. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so Gloria, we can start by you giving us a brief history of uh, who Gloria is, your life, and uh, yeah, we can start from there. Okay, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, my name is Nawanyaga Gloria. Yeah. I am uh, 25 years old. Mm, young. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am a young person born and living with HIV. I am an HIV advocate mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not ashamed of saying that HIV is in my blood but doesn't define me. I am a lawyer by profession, human rights activist. I am wow. the founder. That's right. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am the founder of the Young Postils Foundation, which is a charity organization helping orphans born with HIV. Uh, we help them to provide basic needs, uh, scholastic materials, and bring hope to them. I'm also the founder of the Y Plus Music Band, which is still a band of young people, both mm -hmm. infected and affected with HIV. And we use our talents to create a positive impact through edutainment. Last but not the least, mm -hmm. <laughs> I am also um, the founder of the Meet Your Kind initiative, mm -hmm. which is um, right now it's a website and a WhatsApp group where uh, we connect um, young people living with HIV, those who contracted it and those who are born with it to find love mm -hmm. because we are growing up and uh, love or family or you know um, sexuality is part of us so at the end of the day we need to find people who love us the way we are we need to find people who cherish us the way we are we need to you know give birth to babies we need to mm. be mothers and fathers so it's very important and I thought that having this initiative will help us even fight uh, HIV more by working together and giving birth to a free HIV generation. I should say that I'm so proud of you, Gloria. Like, you're so thoughtful and you're outgoing, like you're trying a lot of things to help other people who are in the same situation like you. So, uh, Thank you Gloria, so much. you're is welcome. Mine. So, uh, I, want, uh, I want you to share with us uh, how you dealt with that situation, like when you found out that you have HIV. Mm. How was that moment? How did you deal with it? Mm. How was it on you? Okay, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, first of all, I was born with a virus and uh, at the age of 11, I got to know that I'm HIV positive mm. and my mother disclosed to me. And of course, as a parent, um, you know, society has this uh, created this fear that you know HIV is a deadly disease mm. when you have it you're going to die you don't have any future you're nobody yeah. you understand yeah. so um, she was frustrated and afraid to tell me at first because yeah. of the society perspectives and of course me too when I was in school of course you would see those posters oh, HIV, there a lot of kills, stigmatization HIV and kills and all those all things so I had in mind what I had in mind was HIV kills Whoever mm. who has HIV Will definitely die. is going to die. Oh. You understand? So when she told me that I'm HIV positive, actually this is the way she disclosed to me. Mm. Um, she took me to a very nice place 
because mm. she had some counseling skills mm. and uh, she asked me uh, what do you know about HIV at that age you're young 11 yeah. years very young. I was in primary mm. I didn't know much about HIV but what I knew was I saw posters that HIV kills you so understand? let me ask you were you like when ARVs before or mm. you weren't? Not yet. Okay. By that time we were still taking septrin. Mm. Then when your viral load increased, you would start ARVs. But mm. of course now it changed that immediately you test positive, you start ARVs immediately. Okay. So um, by that time I was still on septrin. Mm. Yes. So uh, when she asked me at that age, I told her that everyone who has HIV is going to die. Going to that die. is what I knew That's about so HIV. That's like, And there are very many people out there, even adults, who mm. have that thought. Mm. Like, they still have that, mm, yeah, yeah. That, that thinking. So um, she got more scared. Oh. <laughs> she got more scared to tell as me. As a parent. As a parent. Mm. Then after she told me, she asked me, what if you find out that you're HIV positive? How will you deal with it? What do you do? Mm. At that time, of course, I was a kid, but I, I, I was, you know, you kind were of well versed or mature with what enough was going to, on. to relate things mm. that uh, I related myself taking this septrin. Mm -hmm. I related myself to the hospital visits we used to do all the time. Yeah. And I was like, mm, maybe I'm one. Something. <laughs> I'm HIV positive. Mm. I didn't answer her. Yeah. I didn't answer because I was, I had already related it in my mind yeah. that I'm HIV positive. And immediately, at that time, mm. I started hating myself. Oh, sorry, dear. I started hating myself. Mm. I hated my parents. I used to judge them. Mm. And uh, I remember one day I told her, sorry, I know she forgave me. Yeah. I also forgave myself I know, it's for a that. process. I, I told her, why did you give me your disease? Why did you give me, why did you do whatever you did for me to suffer? Of course, it was so hurtful as a parent because she would always tell me there is no parent who would wish bad for her children. Mm. Of course, she's a Christian, so she would relate to this uh, Bible verse that if we are human beings, mm. our children can ask us for bread and we don't give them stones, then yeah. what about God? So she would tell me, there is no parent who would wish bad. It happened, it happened, and we have to deal with it by living a positive life and taking a medication. But of course, it was a process. Yeah. It's not something you can do overnight, understand? So it took me like 10 years to um, forgive myself, to accept myself the way I am, to accept that it happened, it happened, and I have nothing to do about it apart from taking my RVs and continue living a normal life. I'm so proud of you once again. Like, <laughs> very many people don't take the news lightly, even the adults, others actually choose to deliberately not start their medication, mm. and it really, really puts them to a worse place. Mm. But I'm so happy that you chose to stand up, you chose you. to live, mm. and it's really so encouraging for everyone out there who is in their early stages of this whole situation. Mm. So um, after your, your finding out and uh, the process of recollecting yourself, mm. how do you like relate with other people in the society? Like, mm the stages of high school, I should say, mm. university. Mm. How do you get through those? Mm. So, um, as I told you earlier, I was um, this close to when I was 11, so I was mm. in primary. Mm. So time came and uh, I think that was primary five or six when I was this close to. Mm. So time came when I was supposed to go to P7 mm -hmm. before I even go to secondary and yeah. university. Mm. So. I was moving away from home because by that time my school had a policy mm. whoever who's in a candid class should join boarding, yeah, section. boarding section. So I was very happy. Why was I happy? Because I'm not going to take medication anymore. Oh. Remember I was at home all mm. those years being monitored. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually our medication used to be in our parents' bedroom. Mm. That you have, it, it's, a a mass. Mass. It, it's a mass. Before anything goes exactly, on. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, thank you. Um, mm. I'm done with I'm this. I'm done with this. <laughs> you, you get because, mm -hmm. of course, my parents won't be there to monitor me, mm -hmm. won't be there to know if I've taken or not. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that in the process I was killing myself. Yeah. So remember I told you I had not yet started my RVs by that time. Mm -hmm. So I went to boarding section for that whole year. You didn't take I anything. didn't take medication. Uh, so I didn't your, at all. Your parents gave you your medication. They're like, 
Gloria, remember to take this. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't like talk to maybe the school nurse to help you with it or something like that. I told them not to talk to them, oh. but I kept the medication and our matron would keep the what? The water. Because they gave me That's a jerry can of water. But um, when I reached school, I was like, now going there every time to pick water, she will still ask me why yeah. you always picking water. Mm, so yeah. ah, to hell with, <laughs> with that. And you so, know how <coughs> school can do when kids mm, find out something about mm, you. Sometimes exactly. they make it a topic mm, everywhere. Mm. I feel so uncomfortable. Yes. So mm. that whole year, I didn't take medication. Mm. I finished my, my PLE. Mm. I went for my vacation. I was okay. I was very fine. Uh, Not knowing yeah. that the, the virus is increasing. Mm. The virus is increasing. So I think it was two weeks to the, 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 the release of our exams, our mm. results. Mm. I fell ill. Oh, sorry. Because I, I, I was not taking medication for that mm. whole year. So the virus increased. Yeah, yes, the so the viral load, load increased. Mm. So when the viral load increased, I fell ill. My, my mom took me to hospital. They yeah. told me, you know what? Your virus has increased in your body. You're starting ARVs. Oh. So that is when I started my ARVs. Mm. Of course, it wasn't easy <coughs> for me after that because um, there is what we call drug reaction. Mm. Um, when I started the RVs, they reacted to my body yeah. that uh, I got uh, lots of rashes on Sorry. my body. Yeah. I um, became very, I, I know I'm not fat, but yeah. I became very skinny, <laughs> very mm -hmm. skinny that you can, you can tell that this girl, there is something wrong. Yeah. Actually, some people, you know, <laughs> around the village started mm. uh, there are rumors that hey that girl maybe she aborted at oh, that age can at you imagine p7, <laughs> p7. Yeah. and they were saying that i had aborted but of course some of them were like hey, that girl there she has age so it circulated mm. around the what the, the, the whole, whole village area. the whole area so i i i um Somehow, mm. I managed to, you know, go, uh, through, go it. through it and mm. my parents supported me a lot. But I didn't know that um, after that, um, that scenario of me falling sick and the whole village talking mm. is going to affect me earlier in my secondary. Because after that, I had a village man who New was school. a neighbor. So, uh, he had heard about it, mm. about the rumors. So I happened to go to the very same school. With that person. Where that guy goes to. Mm. So immediately he saw me. He was like, he went telling everyone that that girl, don't associate mm. with her. She has what? She okay. has AIDS. Too bad. Like, and it wasn't very late that everyone uh, knew about isn't it. Isn't it like schools, don't schools have like a uh, interact club? AIDS club, stuff like that. Like your school didn't have Unfortunately, that. Um, my school didn't have... No. The time I was there, mm. I didn't see it. Okay. I didn't see it. But of course, we had, the, I think, the MDD stuff and uh, all those no, things. That's different because uh, <coughs> many schools currently mm. uh, started up like those abstinence clubs, mm. AIDS mm. club, mm. like they help to teach the children mm. Uh, to end the stigmatization, mm, mm. to learn how to live uh, with uh, mm. fellow kids that have HIV mm. and all that. So, no, we mm. didn't have that, and I'm glad if nowadays schools have adopted have it, that yeah. system, yeah. and I hope it spreads wide mm. in you know every school because truth is stigma is still real mm. even in schools yeah. because I can. Um, bear your witness i've seen some people dropping out of school because of that because of the stigma in school mm -hmm. because even the teachers themselves um my scenario mm. after the, the children knowing of course the rumor kept on spreading every and day the teachers mm. then one teacher called me she was our our mm. um, class teacher mm. then she asked me um what is wrong with you? I'm hearing some rumors. Mm. Then I'm like, no, it's not true. For me, mm. I have cancer. Sorry. <laughs> I told I have what? Cancer. I have cancer. Because I was afraid. Because when you rate cancer to HIV, the HIV symptoms. is the society um, takes it as something very dangerous, very big yes, compared cancer. to what? Cancer is <laughs> to cancer. The this one cancer, is they, they, they're, they're like, okay, you know, there is a way people, I don't know. Maybe let me let me compare it to COVID nineteen. Mm. If we happen to right now 
mm. all of us were here mm. and I test HIV, uh, rather COVID, COVID mm. uh, 19 positive. Mm. Trust me, you run away from me. You get because you okay. won't want to associate with me. I should say now, as a person, mm. like I've dealt with a situation whereby mm. I have literally my whole family down mm. with COVID mm. and mm. I can't run away because mm. I have to take care mm. of them. So, because for you, I've gone through uh, that, but not what everyone understands. 99% of the community will do is run away. Mm. That one has what? That one has COVID. So, practically, that is what also happens when someone identifies themselves as living with HIV. Mm. The society doesn't want to, you know, associate, associate because you. they think it's contagious or mm. maybe if I touch with it. People still have these things. With the kind of. Uh, Education they're giving people about with HIV. With a kind of education they're giving people, with a kind of uh, awareness, the sensitization, the media, the information, mm. the TV, people still have stigma. But we shall not stop. We shall keep on educating people. Of course, people. we shall not stop until mm. the end. And yeah. we believe together we can end yeah. the stigma. Okay. So uh, when it reached to the, uh, the, the teachers, uh, she called me. Uh, then I told her, for me, I don't have HIV. For mm. me, I have cancer. Then she was like, okay. Then it happened that at my hospital, where I was getting medication, mm. I had started taking my medication very well. Mm. I was recovering from that self-hate, mm. from my parents' hatred and mm. all that. That was when I joined um, high school. Mm. So they put me in some study. Mm -hmm. And that study, you would uh, they wanted to see if someone... Um, um, misses over the weekend, mm. can their viral load remain okay, mm. or can their CD4 remain okay? I don't know if you know the difference between viral load and CD. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you can give us some education. Just, just maybe, on just, here. just maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, for 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 starters, mm. uh, CD4s, those are the white blood cells that fight against the virus mm. or diseases. Mm. Then the viral load is the number of viruses you have. That are in, fighting? In the blood. Okay. No. Oh. The CD4s are the ones that fight oh, the virus. Okay. Then the virus, is the, the viral, viral load, load, is the number of viruses you have in your what? In your blood. So if your viral load is below a thousand copies, because even people have a million copies of mm. HIV in them. Eh. Yes. Okay. So if your viral load is below a thousand copies, mm. you are, right now, you are, can I say announced? or you are, are taken to be virally suppressed. Why? Because that number is very little and the, 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 the CD4 can fight mm. to see that it doesn't what? Accumulate. Mm. And if it's below that, so. if it's below 20 mm. uh, copies, mm. then you are undetected. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'm, I'm not I've, misleading I've, people. No, I've learned but, something. But, but yeah, but mm. yeah, that is it. So uh, that study, uh, it required me to go to hospital most of the time, yeah. found me school. So one time on this fateful day, I came back from hospital and I was, I used to like those sessions, Why right? They would give us a transport refund, mm -hmm. they would give us lunch, they would give us, you know, nice lunch. You would be out of school. <laughs> so, so I would probably, definitely I would mm. be eager to go back. Yeah. So I came back at school. This teacher phoned me. The one I told yeah, that, that, I what, that I have cancer. I had a paper. They had given us some forms mm. uh, to whom it may concern in mm. case someone asks you. On that way. So, so I, gave the, I gave her the, the, the form. Mm. Of course, when she read, she related. She's, she's, she's old enough you yeah, know, to, to relate. understand. She was so bitter. Oh. She was so bitter at me. She Instead of understanding me. Instead situation. of understanding, she even created more stigma. Oh. That I reached a time that I would not be comfortable to come to school. And of course, at that time, mm. I had not yet fully recovered from the, the regret I have and mm. the blame I have on my parents. So mm. I would not disclose what I'm going through at school to my parents. Yeah, because, because they would fear. Yeah, exactly. So I would leave home, my parents knowing that I'm going to school, but I would not reach school because I, I hated school. Mm. That teacher went and told ev everyone. everyone, every teacher. So it was- They would look at you in It was really too much for me. Sorry. So th uh, there was a slum near our school. So whenever I would leave home, I would go to the slum. I would not reach school. Time to go back home, I you would go, go back home. home. So I, know, I, th I don't know, maybe God, there is a way God does, does his things. So mm -hmm. time came still um, in that period mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were going to shift from where I was staying. Yeah. So my mom called me and told me, 
you know what, we are going to shift <coughs> from this place. Yeah. But we wouldn't want you to shift schools, to change schools, because yeah. it will affect you. Not knowing that the school that she wants to leave me to is the school that I'm facing stigma yeah. and the discrimination and not even attending classes. Mm. And she was like, we want you to live with your auntie who is nearby until maybe you finish senior four, mm. then you change your school. Then I was like, you know what, mom? Just take me along. Just, just. Just change me, mm. just change me the school because I narrated the whole story. Yeah. That is when she understood what I was going through and she was like, why didn't you tell me earlier, yeah. you know? I would have done something, but since I, I had, you know, I told I cannot, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Mm. Yeah, so um, thank God I changed school and I changed in a candent class that was mm. senior four. Yeah. So I changed to a school which was so good that uh, no one knew about my status, mm. you know, no one cared yeah. you know, whether I'm taking drugs or not. Oh, but of no. course, I would also be careful yeah. that I don't, you know, wait for everyone to, to be in the dormitory to see. You like understand? Yes. Mm. And uh, also God um, helped me to be a bold and strong woman so that I am. So you didn't have like any close friends like mm. who knew about your situation and you no, oh. I, oh my God, I had a lot of stigma. Sorry. <laughs> I had a lot of stigma that you can't even imagine mm. that even my brothers, because I'm the only girl mm. in my mom, mm. I would feel very bad that they know about my status. Oh, sorry. I wanted it to be me only for you me. Alone. You understand? Mm. <laughs> yes. So uh, time came and as I, I was telling you, I was mm. a very strong and bold woman That's and good. I acquired leadership in school. Mm -hmm. I became the head girl. <laughs> I became the head girl, mm. became the mama for scripture union, and mm. I was moving on with my yeah. life from Pola and Pola yeah. while I'm praying. Yes, yeah, so that is how I finished my um, yeah. my O level. Yeah. Yes. That's good. And A level, same A school. A level, I no, not not same school. I you know still as an school. adolescent, mm. there comes that stage <coughs> of like dating, mm. people exploring mm. this and that. Mm. So how was that on you, like in school? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to sound or how, but uh, these things, kids start mm. as early as like senior five, mm. six. Like they stand. Mm -hmm. They start to realize who they are. Mm -hmm. They start to get those attractions and all that. Mm -hmm. So, in, in my A level, mm -hmm. I changed a school and uh, I went to a school that is near our home mm -hmm. to where we had resided or mm -hmm. shifted. And uh, the fact that even in this school, I acquired, I, I acquired leadership that is, I was the head girl and the scripture union chairperson dating. Prayer really was your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it really, it would really be so hard for yeah. me, you know, because I was like a leader, I was like a role model, so someone seeing me in mm -hmm. that really, and that, and that's <laughs> it, it would really be, <laughs> yeah. it would not make sense. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't so much into, uh, you know, uh, dating, but mm. of course after school, oh, yeah, I, know. I can jazz you lots of stories uh -huh. <laughs> at university. Yeah. Uh, this friend of mine moved in and by that time my, my dad fell ill. Yeah. So when he fell ill, practically at home we didn't have money because every money you would mm. get would go to hospital. hospital. Yes. So at their place they were rich. Yeah. They were rich so she had everything. So um, here, here I am struggling mm. with finances because of course at home yeah. things are not well so should um, basically buy everything mm. you know food water I everything know. everything so sugar and I was, all like, that depending on her you mm. understand so time came and she was like mm. you know what I have a boyfriend and I want him to sleep over to move in with me in that same hostel in that same room oh <laughs> I know so uh, time, of course, by that time, uh, as I've told you. Was it like a kind of self-contained room, a small room? Mm. How was it? It was kind of big. Oh. It, was, it was like a, a, a residential house. Okay. So the sitting room, oh. no, no, the, the, yeah, the sitting room, which is kind of big. So that was our room. You get so it was kind of big enough. But of course, it, would, it was very weird at all. Yeah, very you weird. Know. So how did you deal with it? <laughs> I'm narrating a story. Mm. So I was like, I could not say no because she was practically buying everything. Get, I was depending on her because I didn't have any money, even at home, 
I didn't have any money. Mm. The, the money was not there. Mm. So I let her. So the guy came, but you know how men can be. You know, all of a sudden he picked interest in me. Of course, it was also a big hassle, you know, for him to stay all the time because whenever he was in a room, of course, I would, you know, give him privacy. You understand? You know, mm. the, you know. I the know, thing. I know those campus yes, things. Yeah, exactly. Okulini yeah. Amoti, what? Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, he comes. Um, he starts asking me, "Why are you taking medication?" Mm. My roommate was not so nosy, mm -hmm. even the new one. She was so was. She would not care. Mm -hmm. You know, we girls, we sometimes we take painkillers, whatever. Mm. So she wasn't so nosy. But this guy was so much bothered to know why, why? I'm taking medication. And of course, I would lie to him. I have stomach ache, I have headache all the time. Mm. So when he picked interest in me, he asked me why I take medication. I, I told him, I've been telling you, I have what? Yeah, something is paining me. Exactly. So um, he kept on insisting. And eventually I told him, you know what? Mm. This can happen. Your girlfriend is my friend, my friend, my classmate, my roommate. How do I even think that I can be with you? Mm. You know, I'm, it's like I'm betraying, you know, my friend. So in Sonia is full of songu. So this is what he did. He went into my suitcase mm -hmm. when I'm not in Around. the room. Mm. He checked for my medication and my medical forms. <coughs> he found them. He read everything. He ran to my roommate and told her that I was interested in him and I wanted to infect him so that he can infect the girl. Okay. So you can imagine. It was not so easy for me at that time because mm. I tried to sit my friend down, down and explain to her but she could not believe or yeah. could not understand. So I had to first run away from hostel for some few days. Back home. You know. Not back home because even at home my, my dad was sick. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I went to a friend of mine. But when I was there, I was like, for well, how long will I keep on running going away to from this? this? You know, mm -hmm. this is me. It's not gonna change. Mm -hmm. My status is not gonna change. So the world should accept me of who I am. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to go back and confront this problem mm. as a bold person mm. because bold people don't run away from problems yeah. but they be there and solve the problem so i came back mm -hmm. after some few days mm. i came back to the room i found them mm. they were like we cannot stay with someone who is hiv positive oh. and someone who is a bitch who wants to go on infecting people so they left the room in the middle of a semester, I was like, it's okay. Let so me I stay, stayed yeah. in my room. Mm. Of course, the, the whole room I had sprayed at Everywhere. hostel, at school. Mm. So I decided to be a one man, um, one one man, man army, army yeah. that I'm going to fight on my own. Yeah. Whether my friends are on my side, whether they're or not, not, I'm going to stick mm. on my, you know, on the right, mm. the right path. So I came back, they left the room, I would lock myself in my room and, mm. you know, do my own reading. And I can tell you, actually, that semester was my best performing semester mm. because I, try, I decided to concentrate on my studies yeah. and ignore the negative energies mm. around me, you understand? Yeah. And I focused, I would go to the library, I would read every time I would go back to hostel, I would go with textbooks and read. Mm. But while I was at hostel one day, I was like, what can I do, you know, to... Prove and point. show these people mm. that you can be HIV positive and, and still, have, still a normal life. have a normal life and still achieve your dreams and still be developmental and still achieve lots of things. Mm. So I went on the internet mm -hmm. and uh, um, that is when I got to know about Uganda, the Y Plus beauty pageant. Mm. Before knowing the Uganda network of young people in HIV, oh. I knew about the Y plus pageant. So I researched about it and it was like uh, young people living with HIV, you can come and go test in a beauty pageant, mm. you be ambassadors of change, mm. you advocate against stigma and discrimination. And it was what I was going through at that time. Yeah. So I was like, let me, let me give it a try. Mm. So I went for auditions. Of course, during that course, I knew that it's organized by the Uganda network of young people living with mm. HIV. So that is when... I got to know that I got to join and know about the, the UNIPA. Yeah, the UNIPA. Mm. So I went for auditions, they were in Ruero, mm. central auditions, yes, I had to travel. How are you manager? Uh, by that time we had, I think, finished um, school, we were in that car holiday, mm. that uh, first 
uh, January intake and then that long holiday mm -hmm. to the September intake. So I went uh, for auditions after I went uh, for the boot camp. I went mm -hmm. through the auditions, mm -hmm. I went for the boot camp. It was in Fort Porto. Oh, your mother knew about it? <laughs> 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 no, she didn't. Uh -huh. She didn't. Mm. I'm this kind of person who is really very aggressive. That mm. sometimes I just go for it. Okay. I I don't care. Yeah. I just go for it. Yeah. yeah so um, I went for the boot camp. We came back to Africana, and I was crowned Miss Y Plus. Thanks. That was 2017. <laughs> yeah. So I became Miss Y Plus 2017, mm. 2018. And it's really give me uh, rather rather gave me um, a big platform for me to you know um, advocate against stigma and discrimination mm. and share my story mm. and uh, also tell the whole world that it's not a crime to mm. be HIV positive. Yeah. And having HIV doesn't mean that you can't do anything. Mm. Having HIV is not um, the end of life, you know, mm. you can still do more. Even when you're HIV positive, you can yeah. still live, you can still study, you can mm. still be anything you want to be in life. So HIV is just a small, tiny virus, mm. you know, that is in someone's blood and it cannot define you. It cannot define your potential, you mm. understand? Yeah. So I went on spreading the news. I, went, I did um, outreaches, school outreaches. I even became the ambassador for Shiva, that is students HIV awareness. Mm. I um, joined very many organizations, their advocacy. I started doing um, um, media and social media advocacy. Mm -hmm. Like if you follow me, hopefully yeah. if you research about me, you mm. can see the advocacy I've been doing for all these years, yeah. almost five or four <laughs> five years. I've been inspiring, the advocacy, very yeah, many inspiring other. people. Yes. And still I joined international um, advocacy uh, where I joined different bodies. Um, I attended the ICASA and the IAS, that is the International AIDS Society, mm. uh, organizes the biggest HIV conference in the whole world. Mm. Yes. So I managed to, to attend. It was in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Mm. I, been able to attend different international uh, conferences mm. uh, associated with different international advocates, mm. HIV advocates, mm. and yeah, that is when my journey started for advocacy. So, the Y Plus Band, is it an idea that came up? Yeah. After joining? Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, after me joining uh, the advocacy world, I noticed that stigma is still there. Mm. I noticed. Even in the organizations? Even among people living with HIV, they stigmatize themselves. That oh. is how crazy it is. Mm. So I was like, when, 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 when I used to go to communities, mm. most people still have that perspective that, you know, when someone is HIV positive, they cannot do anything. They, uh, they don't have any potential, mm. they are going to die, they don't have any, any future, you understand? Mm. So I wanted to bring something that can bring out the talents of people living with HIV, the potentials mm. that can um, give uh, pe these people a platform to explore their potentials mm. and to show the whole world that, you know what, we, can we are something. HIV positive, but we have talents, we are talented, we have great potential. It's mm. not, so it's known that if we're mm. HIV positive, we can't literally do anything. Okay. So uh, that is when I came up with the Y Plus uh, music band. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, the Y Plus music band right now consists of 20 members, 20 mm. young people, both mm. infected and affected. Yeah. Those infected are those born or contracted the virus okay. in their blood. Right. And those affected, there can be people like you, mm. you know, who probably maybe have relatives mm. who are HIV positive mm. because everyone in this world has at least someone who An they are attached to mm. who is what? HIV, HIV. positive. Mm. So in some way, in one way or another, you are affected by HIV. Yeah. So for me, I welcome all of them mm. and I help them to boost their talents. We have an album. Mm. consists of six songs yeah. hopefully you can, you can support share us. it with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i would definitely share mm. uh, we also do community outreaches mm. and in that um the Y Plus Music Band gave birth to a charity organization mm. because we were like not going to just do advocacy when we're not helping other, people. other young people, okay. you know. So we decided to come up with a charity organization where we hope orphans, specifically orphans mm. who were born with HIV mm. and have no basic needs. Mm. 
Okay. So we go to different our different villages, mm -hmm. different you know places, and we you know we help them out. And so far right now, we are I adopted two, but we get different um, funding from different people, well wishers and good Samaritans. And if you're also out there and you can't support the work mm -hmm. we do, please don't hesitate. Yeah. You can reach out to her or, you know, any... Yeah, uh, I'll share your Yeah, sure. Your and platforms. you can help us uh, give hope to these young people and help them uh, have a brighter future. Okay. Thank so. you so much, Gloria. Pleasure. This has been a very, very inspiring session. Your story and I know very many people, young youths out there, are going through the same. And I know it's going to help very, very many, the young, the old, every category of people out there. So we are really humbled to share your story with us. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you for tuning in in this episode. Gloria's story has been so, so touching, inspiring and educative. And to all the young people out there, don't be scared, HIV, is something we can all live with. It's not that you're handcuffed or that you're going to die tomorrow. If you choose to take on your medication wisely and right in the right way they've told you to, you can live a very, very long life. Thank you for tuning in. Till next time. <laughs>